and have your comments heard. With no one coming forward, I would entertain a motion to close the public hearing. So moved. Uh, motion Freeman second Harrison that we close the public hearing. All those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? Pizza. I sorry. Aye. Okay. <laughs> Moving on. Right. Public hearing's closed. New business item number two, consider a request for a waiver of distance limitation to allow for the sale of cereal malt beverages within two hundred feet of a school church or library during the Festival on the Trails event to be held June 13th and 14th, 2014. Mary Bush, there you are. Here I am again. Um, as stated in the previous um, um, opening for the, for the public hearing, all of the information is the same. This is to approve a request for a waiver of the distance limitation to allow for the sale of the retail cereal malt beverages within 200 feet of a school, church, or library during the Festival on the Trails event to be held June 13th and 14th. Okay, this is a new business item and it's not a public hearing. We will certainly allow for public comment if someone wants to come forward because, Mary, you really shouldn't go for it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, in case somebody missed their window of opportunity early. <laughs> and with no one coming forward. Uh, Mary, if you want to come back to the, the podium, uh, questions for Mary regarding new business item number two. I have just one quick question. It's more for Chief. I understand you've had the chance to review the application. And are there any concerns from the department or from you as a whole with that, doing what we've done in the past for the group? No, sir. No concerns at all. Excellent. Thank you, sir. I have another question for the Chief, and that is, uh, have we, uh, have, are we going to be pursuing cooperative arrangements with the, with the county sheriff and other entities to maybe provide supplemental security for the event. Uh, we've done that in the past. Yes, sir, and we have already taken care of that, arranged it, operations and plans are in place. Excellent. Excellent. That's all, that's all I need to know. Anyone else? Christy? Yeah, I've got Larry, one go ahead. We, you know, of course, we decide this every year, and uh, I guess when does the law apply? And, and maybe the question should be is it time for this ordinance just to be? Uh, rescinded or revealed. I mean, at what, what time have we ever not approved this? Why, I guess, why do we keep bending the rules when, is it just a, a legacy ordinance that no longer applies? Well, the, the distance limitation? The two hundred feet? Well, I, I mean, I, I when, what, when does it apply? I guess we, I, we've... I, I think that it applies generally throughout the year. Uh, there is a exception that's asked for for what's now a two-day event and that's pretty much it. Well, uh, I don't think we want to change the law for everyone else necessarily. I think we want to consider those on a case-by-case -case basis. Didn't we also have, I mean, didn't Blazers ask for a bending of the rules as well? A 3.2 beer license uh, within 200 feed to probably, I would have guessed, the First Presbyterian Church and maybe the, uh, the uh, Aquatic Center, but uh, I think it's probably far enough away from Gardner Elementary. I think the issue is whether or not we're looking at a special event rather than, you know, just day-to-day. -day. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't think that we want anybody necessarily uh, selling beer within a spinning distance of an elementary school all, all year long. And that's kind of where, where it comes back to. Mm -hmm. But I think what Larry's saying is we are. Yeah. I mean, well, Blazers are keep going. So he, he's questioning the validity of even having this process in place, I guess is, is what he's saying. Right. If we're going to grant it every time, then let's review whether the law is still relevant. I mean, well, and maybe you can tell us, do we, do, is this a common law in other cities, right? Well, yeah. Yes. 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 I mean, <laughs> if, I, if, I could, if I could add something there, that's. You know, we've, yeah. we've gotten very little <laughs> input from the community yeah. uh, in the past. Uh, even with the Blazers, uh, uh, we had people that spoke for it and against it. 
uh, and but only a couple of people total. Uh, trust me when I tell you, one of these days somebody's going to want to do something next to a church, and they're going to fill the room in a way that uh, that, that is as full as it is this evening, if not greater. Uh, and I think we're going to want to possibly pay attention to those people in a way that we haven't been compelled to previous. So, so there are or other ordinances in other cities just like this, but are they routinely, you know, this, revisited on a case-by-case -case basis like these? Mayor, this is a very common planning zoning issue where you have the distance requirement. And actually, typically you see a larger, in my experience, I've seen a much greater distance. The reason you want to continue to maintain this is so that you can look at them. There may be certain conditions that you want to look at. There may be certain parameters that you want to make sure that are in place before you have a blanket approval to allow it on a routine basis. But it is a very common planning zoning component mm -hmm. to see in a, a land development code. Keith, any questions? Any further questions, Tori? I guess I still go back to what changes that we don't we don't allow this to happen you know any other time and now all of a sudden we change it i mean if the if the purpose is not to i'm assuming part of the purpose is not to uh, subject children and people who have different religious beliefs to something they may fa find offensive or uh, you know not wholesome whatever mm -hmm. why do we keep changing you know, why do we keep turning our head and saying it's not a big deal this one time? Well, when, I think, oh, I'm sorry, oh. What changes, actually, is, is you have an application process for a one-time special event. Now, it might be one-time yearly. <coughs> That's better by your chief of police. We pull in extra, for, uh, extra personnel to help support such a measure. So there's things in place that we could not do if someone wanted to build a 3-2 walk-up bar on the corner next to the old city hall. Um, without this law, they could do that. They could apply for such a thing, and if, if we wouldn't have any reason to say, no, we don't want you to have an outside bar there, when that might not be the best fit. This is, this is what this law allows the city to do, and that's the one-time exemption when it comes through, and it's got the support of the chief of police and also uh, a very low incident record. Looking at, I mean, that's why you have these in place, so there's, a, there's an application process involved so you're aware of it and you can monitor and you can manage it. And again, we go back to the issue of a special event versus an ongoing Absolutely. concern. And this is a special event, it's a one weekend a year event that only takes place. And the only reason why we're having to do this in the first place is because we don't really have a central gathering area downtown other than near a church, a school, and <laughs> a library. I mean, that's we've got the trifecta here. So, you know, if, if something were to happen where we would have land available downtown that would be more than 200 feet away from these buildings, I think that we wouldn't even have to have this exercise, but that's where we're at right now. Yeah, and the schools in question I know are not going to be in session. Uh, mm -hmm. The events are, are held at a time when the school's out. I'm pretty familiar with the Presbyterian Church over there who uh, doesn't have a problem with it. And my guess is it probably impacts the library, but nobody showed up to speak at the public hearing. Not the way the library is involved. Yeah. What's that? What was that? I think the library, at least in the past, has been engaged with the festival committee, so. <coughs> yes, that's true. I'd like to move that we approve the request for a waiver of the distance limitation to allow for the sale of retail cereal malt beverages within 200 feet of a school, church, or library during the Festival of the Trails event to be held June 13th and 14th, 2014. Second. Motion, Freeman, second. Should that we approve a general retailer license allowing the Festival on the Trails Association to retail cereal malt beverages for consumption on the premises for the Festival on the Trails event to be held on June 13th and 14th, 2014. All those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? No. Motion carries. May I make a clarification? Because we have we had on the books the waiver of distance limitation and then the general retailers license. And I think we need to vote on both. Yep. Right. I move we approve the general retailer license allowing Festival on the Trails Association 
to retail cereal malt beverages for consumption